Um, if any of you are familiar with Facebook and, and stuff, it's the news feed or the activity stream or any one of a thousand sort of uh, different synonyms. But this actually presents us with a unique problem in the sense that we have to query reasonably complex data, but also associate that with the privacy requirements of social networking. You know, I only want my status to be seen only by my friends, right? I don't want them to be seen by, you know, anyone um, on the, on, the, uh, on the network per se. And, you know, we use a lot of Google App Engine APIs, Google APIs, GWT, and this will be talked about later uh, in the session. Um, and as we've built it, we've learned some lessons, which I'm going to talk about right now. So the first lesson, uh, memcache. So memcache, we basically came across this problem that we have a lot of unknown relationships. And every time we query for our feed, we have to fetch these associated objects every time because we can't store them uh, as child entities because of NED group restrictions or other kinds of issues, limitations to what we can do. Um, and because we query these objects repeatedly and you know, you know, basically queried repeatedly by the same user and a bunch of hundreds of users here, there's a need for this to be very responsive. Um, everyone's accessing this at the same time and they all expect it to be fast. They expect it to happen less than a second, basically, in many cases. So how do we sort of scale this uh, response? How do we scale this and make this more, more responsive? So the solution is memcache. Um, so memcache is, if any of you are familiar with memcache D or uh, Google uses memcache G, memcache is basically a distributed sort of hash table that you can use to scale uh, your web application. And the beauty of it is that you're scaling commonly accessed data like session data, user preferences, and you can even use it as a front end to your data store. Basically, you want to use this to store data that you don't care to be persisted all the time, but it's data you want to access constantly. The cache data is retained as long as possible if no expiration is set. So, you know, why not use it? And the one thing that you do have to promote, it is not persistent. So at any time, you might not get this data. You know, sometimes it might miss, so you still need to handle that. But from our, from our, from our uh, use, you know, the resu results are pretty dramatic. Um, we basically were able to reduce one of our requests from two seconds to around 800 milliseconds. This is about a 60% decrease in response time. This is very, very, very good. Um, another observation we made is that the cache data is retained for a long period of time. So the cache data is not, you know, it tends to be there, it tends to stay there for weeks at a time, there's no, never no problem. And this is another really, really great thing. Um, distributed nature of this cache means that, you know what, the more people who are using your application, the better your app performs. Literally, I'm caching, that, I'm caching one request myself, and my colleague might be using the same, fetching the same amount of information and he gets it much more responsibly because I've cached it for him. And even the free quota of memcache is quite generous. So there's really no excuse not to be using memcache in your web application. The second lesson we learned, message delivery fan out. So as I said, Social Walk is a feed-based application. So now we need to deliver all these feed messages to all the users that are basically subscribed to that presence. Basically, like in Facebook, I need to see all my friends' status. And you see all their, what they're doing, their activities. And so how do I deliver these messages effectively? You know, this has to be, you know, do I copy it to everyone's inbox, so to speak? Um, I really don't need to do that because this message is basically owned by one person, the guy who posted it. Um, and all, but in any case, how do I fetch this efficiently? You know? This is a pretty you know, tough problem. Even in a relational database, it's not quite so simple. So before I talk about Google App Engine, the solution for Google App Engine, I want to go briefly back in time and talk about relational databases. So for relational databases, there are two tables here that you know pretty common here. You think, I have a user table. I have a messages table. And my users are posting these messages. Um, user ID 1 posted hello world. Uh, user ID 3 posted another message. And then I have two join tables. 
Uh, one's a following table, which basically gives me a list of recipients. And then I have a messaging table, which gives me the recipients by message. And pretty much when I need to fetch all these messages, I basically do this complicated SQL query. And the big problem is this, a join. There aren't any joins on App Engine, but in SQL there are. But I, can, but I need to do this on App Engine because I want to scale my app. How do I accomplish that? So there's one special type of property in App Engine that you can use that is very, very useful for this regard. And it's called a list property. A list property is a property that basically has multiple values. It's just like any other property except in the index, you see two entries for it instead of one or three or four, or multiple entries instead of one. And this is really useful. You can densely pack information, um, and you query it just like any other single value property. So this is, very, this is very, very powerful. This gives you a very powerful syntax that you can use to deliver these messages. So let's change our data definition and actually use this. And you can see here, I have a list of strings, which are basically the keys of my recipients. And then all I need to do is, I just need to execute a very simple query that checks the recipients <coughs> for those messages. So this is very powerful, right? Well, there's one problem. To create this list every time, the App Engine data store has to serialize this data. In App Engine, you know, this is a big distributed data store. The data is not going to be stored in a format that any user, per se, is going to be really excited about. Users will, you know, it's stored in a way that makes it scale, that makes you put it on hundreds and thousands of computers. So every single time that it sends me this data back in a form that I need to use, it needs to put this data together. But I really don't care about this data, per se. I just want to query on it. I don't need it to display my message to the user. So how do I solve this? And there's another trick that I'm going to show you. So before I sort of give you the full solution here, I need to talk about two concepts that are very important. One thing that we can do is we can perform queries that simply return just the keys of the entities that I want. This is very useful um, because if you, know, you look at the App Engine quota structure, you're basically talking about tons of, um, basically, we're talking about tons of data that's, you know, that has to be serialized. And instead of serializing that, you're just fetching the keys. Another thing that is helpful to note is that App Engine keys are stored in a special way. One of the things that they're stored in is, this is actually very uh, interesting. They're stored in something called protocol buffers. Now, if any of you are familiar with Google open source technologies, more technologies, Google has open sourced this concept of protocol buffers, which is basically a fancy way of serializing data. You really don't need to know how this is really structured, but one thing that's very cool about this is that basically there's a unique ability now to retrieve a parent key from a child because the parent is actually encoded in the child's message. So anyone lost completely? <laughs> So now we have a solution. You know what? Let's put all those recipients in, some, in a child. Let's define a one-to-one -one relationship, and let's actually query this child just on its keys, and then retrieve the parents from this key encoding standard that we've, uh, that we've discovered. So I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but you can see here, this is my final new data definition. You can see here, I have a recipient which is my child object defined up here. And you can see here that it has a reference back to its parent, of course. And I'm storing the recipients list that I need to serialize up here. And again, I need to query it now using the low-level data store API. So as I said, I, will touch on the, I did touch on the low-level data store. One of the problems with the current implementation is there are no keys-only queries in the, persist, in the persistence APIs. But in the low level data store, we can accomplish this. So basically what I do is I query on my recipient's object. I add a sort here for the date field. And then all I need to do is 
I get this list of